Hey there, this is Perch, and we're doing a review of Batman Last Night on Earth, and there's a lot of reviews out there. I mean, I just want to start with that. There's there's a lot of people who are doing a lot of reviews, and so I'm going to take a different approach. If you're looking for a kind of step-by-step walk through the pages, I'm not going to do that for you. I think um, you should go buy the book, uh, frankly, or, or there's other reviews that will cover it. I want to take this from kind of a different tactic. And what I want to do is, is to say first, you know, my old question, is this for you? And try and answer that. And then I want to ask another question, which is, um, how will this live? Uh, how is this title going to, to go forward? Is this going to be one of those books that's going to be remembered 15, 20 years from now or not? And it's a bit of a, it's, it's, it's impossible to fully answer this question because it's book one of many. It'd be like trying to to assess the longevity of Watchmen uh, with just reading the first issue. That, that doesn't work. Um, but but there's some clues in here. I mean, I think we can... One thing that I think you can count on with uh, Scott Snyder is when you read his story, uh, you read the first issue of an arc. And I think if you go back and look at any of his stuff, uh, it doesn't go off the rails. It, he, if, you have, if you like what you see in the first issue of the arc, it tends to... He builds on that story. He doesn't suddenly rip the rug out from under your feet in issue two or three, and suddenly you're reading a different story. I think there are some writers who, who write like that. And sometimes that, that can work, sometimes not. But, but Scott Snyder, at least in his, in his books and in the arcs, and I've always found that true, and I especially find it true in this, that he's, uh, the word isn't methodical, but he, he sets a world, he opens up a, a box and he sets the world in motion and you can see a lot of, of hints, a lot of things in the first issue of a run that he's going to pick up and play and look over and kind of answer the questions that he's asked. And it's, he, doesn't, um, he doesn't cheap out. So, I, so let me, I don't want to go too far down this topic, but there's a, there's a path for some events where you read the first issue and there's a lot of kind of shock moments, a lot of pages designed to just surprise page turner pages, if you will. And then you get to the second, third, you get to the middle act and there's nothing really going on. It's, it's because they, they blew all their shocks in the very, very beginning. And then maybe there's a reveal on the last page of a couple comics, but it, you get a, you get a slog through the middle and Snyder, I found it, uh, you know, and you can see that with like old events like secret invasion or secret empire, we'll go over all the secrets. That was kind of how the story was structured and maybe you like it, maybe you don't, that's fine. But Snyder's stuff tends to be more, he opens up with a world and then he goes and explores the different elements of that world. You don't get, you know, shocks. Uh, you don't get shocks for shock value. And I think that that's important as I kind of describe this book. So Batman Last Night on Earth, it's part of the black label, which is confusing to know exactly what that means now other than you can have swears. Um, it's a longer story. This isn't a, a small comic. It's a bigger comic. Um, it's got excellent pencils by Capullo and wonderful inks uh, by, I'm not going to pronounce his last name right, Jonathan Glapion, we're hoping. And I think this is, you know, not to reinforce a point I made a lot more, but if you look at this comic and you look at the, the marriage between pencils and inks and colors, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And, and I think if you pick up this book, 15 years from now, it's going to still be beautiful. The, the colors and the dynamic, it's just, it's a really nice, uh, really nice looking comic. And, and a lot of the praise obviously goes to Capullo. Um, his, his connection with Snyder is magical in the sense that the two of them create really beautiful, really, really nice books. And I'm, I'm trying to think of an artist writer pairing that has the same kind of strength as these two. It's, uh, you know, certainly there are a few, um, you know, there are a few out there, but uh, this is just a beautiful book. And I love the fact that it has an actual inker. It has a color. It's, it's, everybody is, is playing their roles really, really nicely. Uh, so uh, the book is separated into different parts. So we got like part one, part two, part three, and so on. And I'm curious if that's how it's going to continue through the whole event. I hope so. Um, because I think that that he's doing the chapters really right here. Um, we start off with with kind of a mystery um, that Batman's uh, on the case. So really hearkening back to kind of the detective part of detective comics. I like, I really like. A lot of people skip that in Batman. We get 
kind of from the very first page, a Batman mystery, a detective mystery, and that Batman's trying to kind of uncover it. That's not, uh, there, there's a deeper mystery, obviously the whole book and the whole series is going to get into, but um, we've got layered, we've got layered mysteries. And I like how we're, we've got Batman as roots. It's raining. We've got some nice dark visuals of him. We've got some really nice moody work by Capullo and uh, we're starting with a mystery. And then we fade into what I would call the high concept aspect of the book, which is, oh, he's been in a asylum the whole time. And it, there's little bits here. I'm, again, other people will take you through this in, in probably better detail, but I want to just draw out the, the use of the fly that's kind of buzzing around these scenes you see in, in pretty much every page, almost every page, you've got this fly. You've got uh, kind of the aspect of, you know, unreal and this that's going on. And what I like about this segment here is that um, we reveal that the world is not what Bruce thought it was, that he's kind of coming to himself. Uh, we get the, uh, the, the, you know, he's in an asylum and he seems to kind of accept it with an Alfred there. But then, um, you know, the book one concludes with, nope, he's going to fight. And what's, what's interesting about here is there is a storyline that, uh, that Snyder did uh, some time ago, well, I, I'm now forgetting where exactly it was in his run, but basically set up this concept that Batman had created a system that when he died, there would be a, a or, you know, as he aged, there'd be a clone of Batman that would kind of come out, a, 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 you know, a, a replica of Batman, of Bruce, that would uh, take on the mantle and continue the fight. So kind of the ever Batman, uh, the the always Batman. And there's enough little hints in this first book that that is what we're playing with, that this is one of those clones, that this is one of those uh, Batman that uh, is kind of coming in. And maybe the process went wrong uh, rather than being greeted by, you know, an aging Bruce Wayne. It is uh, something has interrupted this process. And, and so we get into book two and there's some, you know, some good things. We get the reveal that, that, uh, you know, that is uh, this, this Batman was right. And I, I, by the way, I love the fact that we didn't, that we didn't play out this, is he in, you know, was he really in an asylum kind of mystery for three or four issues? Other comics would have, other writers would have, they would have strung this out a lot longer. But here I think Snyder's breaking some of the traditional tropes in comics and, and kind of the traditional writing of we've, we've got, we started a mystery, we get a bigger mystery, we reveal the mystery. Snyder is marching us toward the story he really wants to tell, which is the, the last Batman on earth. Uh, if, if you will, or, you know, kind of this, this law, this last story as you're reading along. And as we finally get to the point of uh, Batman saying goodbye and kind of emerging from the sand, um, you get a real sense that this is Snyder's last story uh, with Batman. And then it's not, he's going to continue to write justice league and he's going to do some other things. And I wouldn't be surprised if Snyder came back to tell other Batman stories in the future, but it, this has, the story has weight to it and not, not wait in a bad way, but wait in a, it, this feels like something that he's been wanting to tell. This does feel kind of in alignment with his Batman run. Um, it feels like it's picking up right after, uh, the conclusion to his, to his new 52, uh, series with, uh, Capullo. Um, it's, it's a little bit like, I, I want to compare it to Grant Morrison's, um, uh, final story with Mark Silvestri on X-Men where, we were in the far flung future and it really had the waiting of the last story he was going to tell. And, and so there's, I, I'm feeling a bit, not, not sad, but it's um, when you read this and you see kind of the depth of, of craft going on here in the story, you, you my first thought is, uh, man, why is this the last story? Why don't we get more Batman run? Uh, especially with, with all the kind of the angst and the turmoil that's going on around Tom King and, and his version of Batman. Um, I mean, it's trying to answer the question of, is this for you? If you, if you liked the Snyder Capullo, uh, uh, Batman run, this is definitely for you. If you like Snyder's work on the, um, uh, black mirror and, and kind of the earlier detective work, it is for you. It, it feels like that Batman, that's the Batman you're getting. And, um, you know, so as we go through the story, now we're starting to unveil more of the world. Uh, there's some interesting, you know, it's just all havoc has, has broken loose. 
Uh, we've got some Green Lantern uh, stuff, and and the population on the surface is crazy. Batman's whisked away by a, a kind of a vixen and and um, poison ivy, and and there's just some there's some nice beat moments here of of um, Batman. Now now here's the real mystery. Here's the real thing that Batman's going to explore. What happened to this world? Who was responsible? Um, where did it all come about? And we get a couple little teases here. We do you know, confirm that this is one of the, the clones of Batman, one of the, the regenerated ones. That's why he's so young and everybody else has aged and gone through all this. And it also kind of explains a little bit why, you know, this process went wrong to some extent. Um, but there's a lot packed in here. Uh, the one, you know, the, the question we have here is we're, we're veering right into the offer and the work that Snyder has been doing with Justice League. So we're getting a, a Lex Luthor uh, bit here. And yeah, I'm curious, does this fit with that storyline? Is this kind of, are we seeing, uh, it's hard to tell where in, uh, as this, this recap is taking place, where chronologically this is happening. And I think that's a question that uh, is going to impact this, this series, because as the issues fall out, we're also going to have the whole, uh, you know, Villains United uh, as the piece uh, going on. Are you sorry, Death Villains United, what am I thinking? You're the villain <laughs> that's going on. And so how are these two stories going to work together? Um, there is an ad for You're the Villain in this book. So it's um, it, it, there's a connection or is there a connection? That's kind of an open question that we have here. And I'm curious how that's going to impact the series as it goes. But uh, anyway, the story kind of concludes with Batman setting off on his mission and his mission is going to be him. And this, uh, this very, this is, this is the high concept kind of wacky concept Snyder, uh, the Joker's head kind of preserved in a jar, um, which may or may not be real. I mean, what's interesting about this is, uh, you know, the Joker doesn't interact with anybody else, the head, and, um, it's unclear if it's there and I just how it appears kind of in the sand and, and how it comes to Bruce. Um, I, I don't know. I have suspicions that head that this whole head and jar is in his mind, but but who knows? This could be some guiding aspect to him. Maybe it's real. I, I the thing with Snyder is uh he in his in his series, and he's more, I'd say, constrained a little bit with the Batman work he's done and even with the Superman uh, uh bit he did. Um with Justice League. I feel like he's still taking toys out of the box. He's got some very kind of very high concept ideas he's throwing up, uh, not on the wall, but just he's doing a lot of different things. It doesn't even feel like we've hit the end of that box yet. He's still throwing concepts out at us um, in that run. And I think he said he's scheduled to go to 75, I believe. I, I may be wrong about that. but So there's still time, but you still feel like they're unpacking a lot of things. In this book... Um, it feels again, more like the Batman stuff. He's unpacked a lot of mysteries and a lot of things. And for sure, we're going to get some kind of very wacky, uh, aspects of this world. There's enough teases here to, to indicate that we're going to see a lot about what's going on in the, the DC universe, uh, different players and how they're handled. Um, Bruce is kind of on a mission to figure out what's going on, maybe save Clark if he's still alive. And then also kind of get to the mystery of who, you know, who's really launching Omega or this, uh, this, who's the villain, if you will. And there's kind of a tease that it may be one of his protégés. Maybe it's, uh, Jason or, or Dick or, or Damien, um, or, or Duke, who knows? Um, so that's, there's some mysteries. There's still some high concept stuff that's going to come out here, but it, it feels like he's defined the platform. He's defined the world. And now we're going to play in that world. So unlike the justice league, we're still throwing new things into the world. This one, it feels like, We've got a, a solid story. We've got a solid foundation and it's, um, it's, it's good. Um, you know, so I'll answer the question again. Is this for you? Well, like I said, if you like those Batman runs, um, or detective runs, if you like kind of Snyder when he's telling a, a strong story, I think it's, it's for you. Um, if you're a comic fan, I, I think this is for you. It's, it's a good comic. It, it feels strong. What's interesting is in the black label, uh, <laughs> line, they can, they can swear, and that's fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but it's interesting because this feels like how the characters would be talking. And then you go back into all the other comics that come out in the month and they're not talking this way. So it's, it's, there's, it's, it feels jarring and it shouldn't. 
Um, it's not a big deal. They're not swearing all over the place. Um, and I'm no, I'm no prude. Um, I'm trying not to get any strikes. So I don't swear here, but I curse like a sailor. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, anyone to talk. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a good book. And now for the other question is, you know, how is this going to survive? That's a harder question to answer. Again, we're on book one, so it's unfair to really judge that right now. But this feels like, because uh, a lot of comics have done the, oh, here's this big, huge dystopian world and everything's crazy. And, you know, the, the, there's been how many old man uh, series have we had from uh, from Marvel at this point? Uh, too many, it feels like. I was a fan of the original one as I reviewed it earlier, but they, they've gone to that well too much. Um, this, this whole story topic, um, has been played out a bit, but it feels new and fresh here. It, it honestly does uh, feel, um, it, it doesn't feel like the same kind of things going, you know, issue after issue. It feels new. It feels good. And I think, I think this story will hold up now. Obviously comics can break your heart and the, you know, this issue can, this series can go off the rails really, really quickly, but I, I don't think so. There's a lot of love and a lot of craft in these pages. And, uh, well, it's normally kind of hyperboil when people say this, I truly believe that, um, this is the story. When Snyder says this is a story he's been wanting to tell, this is where it's all been leading to. He's got a lot of passion built up into this product, uh, with Capullo. Uh, I believe it. I, I believe it from reading this. It, it feels that way. It feels like, uh, this really is the story he wanted to tell and, and would cap his run. It's very odd having this story come out, you know, years later from um, going from the his run on the, the New 52 Batman and then the transition over to Tom King doing Batman. And then this is Snyder kind of coming back to that character. You pick this up and you read it and I'm instantly transported to that uh, zero year kind of storytelling and the Court of Owls and, and a lot of uh, Snyder's stories there. So it, uh, you start to forget everything that's happened since. And I, I don't mean that as a knock against uh, the current work or, or what Tom King has done, but it, it feels very much in that world. Um, the other thing it feels weirdly in the same family of is uh, the, the Sean Gordon Murphy, um, you know, Murphy verse for, for lack of a better word. It has, it, it's, it's not that, it doesn't, it's not the same. It's very, very different uh, in tone and writing and art and everything else. But it feels more in the same family with with that than with current Batman, and I'm not I'm not sure why exactly, other than there's a there's a sense of both purpose and desperation here that is really driving kind of Batman and and big stakes and big adventure. So um, it's an expensive book. So you know we've got a lot of expensive books out this week, but this is a good one. I, I highly highly recommend it. Um, really, I, I, in all honesty, I really recommend this book. I think of the, the big books this, this week, this is the one that's going to give you a lot of bang for your buck. And it's, um, there's a lot here. I, I, again, if you read it just for kind of the surprise reveals and for the big moments, you're going to be missing a lot. There's a lot of, of very nice little things and, and a huge amount of credit has to go to Capullo for throwing in a lot of little not Easter eggs, but elements that make it really feel like this is a story that is is firmly set in the universe, that is built for fans, that is uh, respecting kind of your, as a reader, your trust and relationship in the book. And I, I like that. Um, you used to see a lot more of that. Claremont used to do a lot of that with his uh, collaborators, uh, Romita Jr. especially. There'd be a lot of really small elements in the book that rewarded your uh, you reading the book closely. So read this book closely. There's a lot in here and a lot of good stuff. Um, anyway, that's that's my take on it. Um, highly recommended. Good, good issue. And um, I, I hope you like it. Uh, what do you think? Leave me your comments. What you like, didn't like? Uh, where are you hoping this will go? Would love to hear more from you. Uh, subscribe, notify, all that kind of jazz. Friends, um, likes, uh, the, the things that you're supposed to do on social media, please do. And most importantly, thanks for listening.